listening to Phantasm Podcast, a horror death metal podcast for the old school. Join your hosts, Corey Gorkreis and Dr. Vincent West, as they stuff horror movie reviews and death metal interviews all in one body bag. Listen on iTunes, subscribe on YouTube, and like on Facebook, and head over to stagediverradio.com for more. Hey, what's up? This is Eric Peterson from Testament and Dragonlord. You're listening to Phantasm Podcast. Phantasm. Corey Gorkreis Phantasm Podcast. We have the honor of speaking with the one, the only, Eric Peterson of Testament and Dragon Lord. How you doing, man? Good. What's up, man? Not much. Uh, very exciting. First Dragon Lord album in 12 years. Comes out September 21st on Spine Farm Records. Uh, from what I've heard, it's a, it's a bitchin' record, man. Oh, sweet. Were you able to hear the whole thing? Yes. It's, it oh, sweet. blew me away. I mean... I was really amped up that you know you were doing more of the Dragon Lord stuff, and uh, definitely wasn't disappointed. So sweet, yeah. So yeah, everybody. it came out pretty good, I think. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of different styles and uh, you know different sub darker subjects and stuff. But it's uh, kind of all over the place a little bit, but definitely pretty cool. Yeah, it's very heavy too. It's a lot of good stuff in there. Um, yeah. Now before we get into that, I talked to. Uh, Alex last weekend and, and Chuck before that and mm-hmm. got their opinions wrapping up the, the you know the Slayer tour uh, what are your you know final thoughts on the wrap up of that um, it was it was a lot of fun I mean I, I, I liked going on a little bit later it gave people more time to get in sure um, it was good though I mean overall I mean we got lucky with the with the weather I think a lot of places that would have been super hot actually had you know some cooler weather and nice. uh, a lot of the other places were like arenas inside so you know we got to have lights and look like we had a show we weren't playing in the daylight but right even the daylight with the songs that we picked it was pretty chaotic you know in yeah. the pit and stuff like that just got a lot of people going oh, of course and we even seen pits like way up above nice which was, which was pretty cool like oh, there'd yeah. be like one on the left, one on the right, <laughs> one, one in the pit. So yeah. it was a lot of fun. Awesome! It was great. It was a great tour, and it's just it's sad. Yeah, it's kind of they're sweet, you know. Oh yeah, I mean they're, they're the great Slayer guys. show is just really rocking and just you know lots yeah. of fire. They're playing all the every song you'd want to hear to hear from Slayer. They're playing it. Oh yeah, and the so, you know stage production was definitely amped yeah. up for this, and all it was you know all the fire. And then the bands, you know, they brought with them were just, you know, perfect to you guys and, and Lamb of God and, you know, even now it's yeah, like, it's like a, Death, a it's kind beautiful. of metal history. Yeah, definitely. You know. So I'd say it was worth it and a lot of people will remember this specific tour run, you know, because, uh, you know, I saw them before with, uh, you know, the original lineup when they came back and did... Uh, Was that Lamb of God and Behemoth? No, this was um, it was Megadeth and them, and it was whenever they did Seasons all the way through, and Megadeth did Rust in Peace. And I think Anthrax oh, okay. played too, and then I think we did that. It was American Carnage. It was yep, us. That's it. Yeah. Megadeth and Slayer. Yeah, we did. I think we did the Legacy, maybe or yeah, yeah, you did something like that's that. Correct. And it was a blast, you know, seeing the original guys, and then you know, last year I saw the. Uh, you know Gary, who I love, and you know, love Exodus, and then you're, you're in love. You're in love with them. Oh yeah, <laughs> passionately. <laughs> Everybody loves Gary. Oh yeah, he's he's great. Um, okay. So the new lineup, it was it was cool to see all that with you know, and then Paul coming back was great, and you know I think ending it with what they had is just you know, I, it's it's something to remember for sure, and it was a hell of a tour, and you know the bands that played with them. And, grace the stage were ones that definitely needed yeah. to be there at the end you know including you guys of course yeah so that was good um 
And I do want to say, it was the June 8th show, I went up to Knoxville, Tennessee, and you guys played with Anthrax, and it was just like a uh-huh. one-off show. That was actually the last show at that venue, was that show, so... Really? Yeah, they closed it down after what, that. What was the name of that place? I forgot. Uh, the International. Okay. And it had been here since the early 90s. You know, it was called the Orpheum, and it was called the Electric Ballroom, Valerium. I mean, it's been under different names for a long time. But, you know, they've had, like, Dan. you know, I think Danzig was there before in Death and Typo, you know. They've had a yeah. lot of history of, of stuff there. So it's kind of sad to see it go. But you know, yeah, it was a good show. I had, a fun, I had fun that night. That was cool. Yeah, and it was it was definitely packed out. Everybody wanted to, you know, be there for that. So that was that was exciting. But yeah, you guys uh, had a hell of a stage presence there. I've seen you guys a lot, but that was one of the best shows I think I've seen you guys do. Um, no thanks. It's incredible how yeah. a band like you know you guys just get better and better. It's it's ridiculous. Well, we just we have, we're having a lot of fun, and hmm. um, the songs just seem to mature. As time keeps going, they just keep to see. You know, it's like a. Our songs are like a fine wine. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, they, they just keep maturing and yeah. you know, just keep getting better. I don't know; it's kind of weird. But, yeah. yeah, it's good shit either way. It was excited to see you guys. It was awesome. You guys definitely delivered. But in you know, we're here for Dragon Lord that I'm really excited about talking about with you because, um, like I said, first album in twelve years. Always loved the, the Dragon Lord stuff you got that you did, so it's nice to see it coming back and finally getting out. It took what, like four years in between testing? Um, and... you know, it it took it was like a normal record. Yeah. This is when I had time to actually work on it. Yeah. Um, there was always something going on, and the, in the beginning, it kind of everything got thrown off because um, the original drummer kind of disappeared in action, and we were kind of waiting around and yeah. didn't know what was going on and. By the time we kind of got everything rolling, it really wasn't rolling, and then I had to work on the Dark Horse of Earth yeah. record, and then I worked, and then um, I was introduced to Alex Bent, my um, new drummer, yeah. and that was like kind of a, a weird decision, like, because I didn't want to do it without John, but yeah. at that point, it was just like, a, we, you know, I just missed a couple of time frames when I could actually record so I was like man I gotta make a decision so when I met Alex and jammed with them I knew like okay this is kind of meant to be you know this is right. gonna happen so yeah I mean with all those hiccups like that that's basically um how the record went down but so with all the problems and all the pushbacks every time there was something else like okay you know now there's this problem and you gotta wait longer or you know one of them was Machine had recorded their whole record and um I think they needed to go back in the studio and like do the record again somewhere else or something I don't I forgot what it was yeah and then I had a tour pop up so I could <laughs> yeah it was just like oh my god this is nuts <laughs> and then uh, but with all that being in mind then Leah came into the picture so if I, everything would have happened, it wouldn't have sounded the way it sounded, I don't think. Yeah, it was you know, all kind of meant to be. Getting Leah come, to come in and redo all the choirs that Lyle had done on the keyboards. Right. Um, so now, everything on the record is like a real human voice with, you know, what to do yeah. with the choirs. And she's brilliant, and just, too. You know. Yeah, it just gave it that extra nudge of, you know, sounding more real, not so... I mean, the keys sounded really good, but after we recorded the choirs and then you compare them to the keyboards it was like now the keyboards sound like a demo <laughs> right <laughs> so we were like oh man we got to now we have to do the whole record like this. so but yeah um at the end result was uh you know what what you heard and I'm just super happy that you know it did take 4 years but it's one of those records that it just kept maturing yeah you know and it needed the space and I don't know it's just it's a, the weirdest record I've ever made and it was a lot of fun but um yeah I'm happy with it it's good good it's the best one so far for sure I think so too I mean it's, it sounds I mean it really delivers everything um lives up to it I think Leah did a fantastic job with the vocals and all that stuff is oh yeah so definitely good and, and, and uh the, you know the drums everything is just 
I think exactly where it needs to be. It's a very uh, and then having also having like a slow song on there. Yeah. Uh, you know, having a I don't you know they call them ballads, but it's not a ballad. <laughs> right. But it's you know it's a it's everything I do is clean singing on the whole thing. But yeah. um, it's cool in a way to where you know like when Opeth started doing stuff like that. Yeah. And how they turned it into where that's how he sings now. That that song is kind of a. I mean, it's not influenced by that, but it you right. know, just yeah. trying try to explain it to people. It's going from the black metal sure. to keeping the the lyrical content dark, but the singing is more melodic. Yeah, and then I, having and then having Leah at the end of it, you know, summing up the story. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Oh yeah, and I love the progression of it. A lot of people, of course, you know. When Opeth did what they did and all that, they were like, oh, when are they going to do another death metal record? It's like, well, they're not. I mean, he does Bloodbath once in a blue moon, and you can hear that, but, you know, as they progress, they're just doing their thing, you know, and being yeah. musicians, you know. I miss some of it, though, like the Blackwater Park stuff. Oh, like, it's it's amazing. I like how, I forgot what song it is, but... <clears throat> it starts off super death and it just goes into this whole clean thing and that was kind of inspiring to hear that was pretty cool yeah they're very they're they're a beautiful uh band for sure yeah um but anyway so yeah all the influences are there and um you know from the earlier black metal stuff i mean i'm talking like merciful fate oh yeah angel witch um venom I mean, all those influences are on, are on this record yeah. for me. I think Black Sabbath and Black Sabbath. And even, you know, some of the progressive um, orchestrated stuff like from like, you know, Misanthropic from France or Anorexia Nervosa, you know, to, you know, the older Demue yeah. vibe that I was into. Sure. Um, I definitely hear that. So, yeah. All that stuff, the total package. Um, we want to do a quick uh, track by track, um, if you would. Uh, we got the for Dominion. We got the first track, Entrance. Oh. Entrance is um, it, oh, it starts with the gates creaking open, and it it's uh, it just the sounds of it. It sounds like you're in a desolated wasteland. Yeah, you know the Dominion. <laughs> the minion of Dragon Lord. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. it's off with like a commanding backwards riff, right? And it, it progresses into, uh, you know, some war kind of drum pounding orc kind of oh, sounds. Yeah. yeah, it's very. Um, I guess you would say ominous, or you, you know something's about. Yeah, to... yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely an ominous. Is a You're in the shit. Sure. Something's about to go down. Yeah, and then it <laughs> blasts right into the title track, D- Dominion. Yep. People have heard that song, and Dominion is just like, you know, melodic black metal. Just yeah, the, the vocals and everything, and you know, it breaks down to like a more heavier kind of. Um, Definitely slower pace, but you know, it still has the that's when the clean vocals kind of kick in a little bit. Yep. Um, space between two solos, and uh, next up is ominous premonition, mm-hmm. and just the beginning of that it reminds me of you're now at the gates of hell. <laughs> hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's got that. It's very wicked sounding. Just the the choirs and the the, the, the riff. Um, you can hear definitely like. The merciful slave influences there for sure. Oh yeah, and then it kicks in. And all, I, I, when I was doing the chord progression, it just reminded me of "Murders in the Room" or "By Made" a little bit. Yeah, um, just the way the chords are moving. Maybe not the singing, of course, but right. it's just it reminding me of that. When I, I kind of got me excited because I was like, okay. So when I did the bass, I made sure there's all these little bass licks. Um, I kind of modeled it after that. <laughs> I mean, when That's people awesome. hear it, they're not they're not going to hear it. All right, the idea is there for sure. What I heard, yeah, and then when it breaks down, that's where I don't want to say venom more like possessed. Some of my vocals, I just try to get more aggro. Oh yeah, and not punch in. I just I think I did it all in one go. 
That's awesome. I was reading the lyrics with, you know, looking to the right. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I just wrote it, and I was like, and then, because I was just wanted to show Juan how, what I was going to do. Right. And then when we came back the next day, we didn't even listen to it, and I started doing it again, and he's like, oh, no, yesterday was pretty good. I'm like, let's well, so see what I did, and I can mimic that. And we put it up, it was like, fuck, we got it. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't know what I was tripping on. It doesn't even sound like me, kind of. I mean, it does, yeah. but it, it was—it had that kind of lazy, possess, you know. Yeah. Kind that of trip. That's awesome. Um, the next one is really influenced by this band called Misanthropic from France. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a song that Lyle came up with. Uh, start, you know, we'll start at the riff. Um, I joined it and made it a little bit more. It's more of a hard rock, kind of upbeat song. Yeah still dark though and the character that we talk about is called Lamia mm-hmm. it's a great mythology man eating goddess kind of thing that's character brutal. yeah and it just kind of talks about you know talks about her and things she does and you know, her telepathy and young men's minds yeah. like a siren I guess yeah basically only that one's pretty cool um, and Leah does some cool Hunting chance on that one for sure. Um, she's kind of got her mark on that one all over the place. Yeah. Um, the next one I think is Love of the Damned. Yep, number five. That's the it's a, the slower one, and that one reminds me of like a Sabbath song. I don't know why when it first comes in it just I don't know like something off Sabotage or something. Or, yeah, a little rocking. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. It's um, that one is. Kind of a story about Dante's Inferno, about Beatrice. Love it. How she gets taken to the underworld. Yeah. Captured by the Prince of Darkness. But in this story, she stays in hell and falls in love with the devil. That's good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the next one is uh, the video that we just put out. It's called Northlanders. Yeah, love the video. Yeah, so this one's just, you know, it's about the pagans and... <clears throat> the Vikings, Viking raids, and stuff like that. It's kind of an abstract story. It's not pinpointed on one thing. It's just like scenes, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the very cinematic. I mean, obviously, the video I couldn't do with the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, right. But, you know, that'd be like Game of Thrones or something <laughs> crazy. High production. Yeah, but you know, just kept it, just kept it real, and just kind of had all the instruments and the singing just tell the story I guess you know? yeah you know just right away and... simple yeah <laughs> um the next one is the discord of Melkor yep number seven um that one is about the genesis of the first age of Lord of the Rings um awesome it has to do with Ewa and the Anyar the Anyar yeah um, and the Valinor, the Valinor, the elves, the Anya, like the angels um, that created the, the symphony in the void. Uh, Eowa was like the god in the void. It's awesome. And Melkor was one of the head angels, kind of like the Genesis of the Bible. Yeah. Um, you know, Lucifer was the head angel, mm-hmm. and when he went to Earth, he became Satan. And yeah. This story, Melkor goes down to Middle Earth and becomes Morgoth. Huh. And anybody that is a Lord of the Rings fan will, will know what I'm talking about. But it's right. kind of based on that. And the song was perfect for it because the middle part reminded me of the whole, you know, reading the, the book, the salon, um, the way they describe the, the orchestra being made by the Anur to create life in the void there's a middle part in the song where there's like an orchestrated part yeah yeah kind of reminded me of that a little bit it's amazing and then um the last track is serpents of fire that's probably one of my favorite ones i don't know why i think i put it last because it's like seven minutes long yeah it's it's long <laughs> it's super long it's it's got like three songs in one yeah um i don't know just the vocal vocal pattern is cool to me i like it that's pretty wicked Oh yeah, it's it's, and an it's epic basically era. about just dragons, and um, nah, there's more to the story than that. But it's kind of abstract of just wickedness of in the world. Yeah, I guess. It's, it's great. Yeah, but yeah, the, 
was really excited when I when I got the record, and it's didn't this point it sounds amazing. I can't wait for everyone else listening to hear it. it comes out September twenty first on Spine Farm Records. First uh, album from Dragon Lord in twelve years, so it's definitely worth the wait. Uh, Dominion. It's it's a ripping ass record. I really enjoyed every bit of it, and it's it's epic. Right on, yeah, you know. it's a long time. Two thousand six. That was our last show we did was in Japan. Oh wow! And it just it kind of fell apart the band. I was just I was right. I wanted it to be more of a like a side project kind of fun thing, and it just it started getting kind of dramatic with the the members. And yeah, that happens, you know. The yeah, and, and it just you know what we didn't have time to like tour the world. We had like short little things and yeah. It just now it's funner. It's more back to the project kind of thing, and you know, sure. I definitely like to do some shows, but not, you know, not wear it out. It, I guess. You know. Yeah, not wear it out. Just keep it underground, kind of still, and not, you know. That's good. I mean, never, I'm not, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's a, it's a good record, so. Yeah, and I, you know, uh, something like that, you can definitely see uh, how good of a show it would be as far as the direction, like you know. Uh, Stage production, not really like anything crazy, but you can definitely have fun with it, and if you had the time, oh yeah, yeah. and you know, put on a, a couple of killer shows, like maybe a couple of festival appearances or something crazy, just you know, would yeah. definitely be worth it. And it, you know, hearing that that album live would just be great. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, when I think about it, I get kind of anxiety attacks, just like yeah. going through the motions of getting there again, opening the wounds. And, yeah. You know, but when I listen to it and I get excited about it, it that's when I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but it's when I'm not, and then people ask me about, are you going to do gigs? I'm like, oh my God, yeah. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> makes you want to puke. Yeah. I just have to put the record on and have a couple beers, and then I'll be like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Maybe a little more than a couple, you know, it depends on the... <laughs> yeah. Drink <laughs> a six pack. Yeah. <laughs> or a 12, I'm not judging you, it's fine. <laughs> Whatever gets the anxiety away, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, either way, this record's amazing. It's well worth the wait. It's got so much longevity, and, and I don't think I'm going to get tired of it, or anybody else would. So even if you weren't playing shows, it's something you can keep popping in. and, and It's yeah. got a lot of nook, nook and crannies, because even me, I mean, I wrote it. Yeah. I haven't listened to it for a while, and I finally listened to it again, and I, was, I heard it in a whole different light, and I was like, whoa, I don't remember doing that part, or wait, what's yeah. that part? <laughs> you know? When I know that, you know, after mixing it for so, all those hours and putting in and arguing with Juan about, you know, <laughs> making sure everything was heard. And that's the one thing about this record is there's so many different things going on, but everything's there. There's nothing yeah. that, you know, there's nothing that got swept under the rug or, it's good. or got taken a place because, you know, this part fits there and you can't hear everything. And yeah. that was the case at, some, at one point. And that's one of the reasons why it took so long is we, I go, we need to figure out how the way I hear it in my head, I hear everything. Yeah. And if I hear it in my head, there's got to be a way to hear it on the speakers. Right. And, uh, yeah, we did it. <laughs> yeah, well, congratulations. It's a hell of a record. And it was, like I said, well worth the wait. And I'm excited for you that it's coming out and everyone else hearing it. And, Sweet. You know, it's fucking awesome. Um, the other segment we do, I didn't, I didn't go over this with Alex, but I did with Chuck, and he told me that you were the the horror fan of, of the group. Mm-hmm. So yeah, true. Uh, we're big on horror here at Phantasm, uh, hence okay. the, the name and everything. So, uh, what what really got you into horror movies? Not really like your first one that you saw, but the one where you were like, this is the awesome. one that scared the shit out of me and it made <laughs> me not want to sleep in my room or turn my light on at night. Yeah look under my bed and all that good stuff uh-huh. was it was with Karen Black and it was called The Trilogy of Terror yeah and, well, it's, okay. and there's this doll she brings home <laughs> it's a little like, like voodoo doll that though. fucker scared the shit out of me <laughs> the fuck they're actually putting that out on a blu-ray finally oh my god yeah. I mean it's probably corny now but that thing <laughs> I mean even my cousins my old, when I'd go see it my grandparents they're older and they said like go <laughs> and they'd get a knife and I'd Oh my god! A little little spear. But that wasn't enough. I had to go see The Exorcist. And I didn't even know what the devil was at that point, or you yeah. know, I didn't even know what Satan meant. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I 
I was, that was the first time. I was one like I in saw. sixth grade or something, and I was too young to see that. Yeah. And that just freaked me out, you know. And then it probably molded me into what, <laughs> you know, listening to Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath and all that stuff. I don't know. Right. It made me get into heavy metal when I was older. Oh, yeah, it kind of goes hand in hand. No, I mean, after that, yeah, The Exorcist is a movie that still kind of, you know, now I watch it and I, I'm just like, it's, it's amazing. But I went to, you, you, right. It's still scary. It's still scary. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very real. In a psychological way. Yeah. It's, it's got a psychological effect on people, I think. And a lot um, of shit happened during the filming of it that's notorious with it. And it's just kind of yeah. got that vibe to it where it's like, it seems real because, I mean, I don't know, some of it, they captured it seems real. parts of it that were kind of real. Well, you know, the, I mean, so many movies, they've tried to do movies like that ever since and failed, you know, or just never captured that spirit or that essence of yeah of that, you know. Plus, there wasn't really anything like that done before and whenever they they did it I mean they just did it right the first time there's some other there's some other movies that they've made lately that have kind of freaked me out a little bit um there's one called The Conjuring with this nun oh I love those movies those and with so the good. painting and then yeah. it's got the shadow of the body and it moves you can tell you don't know at first what it's gonna do yeah it's, but it goes from stuff. goes to wall to wall and it finally starts walking <laughs> into the painting and you know it's gonna the body's gonna stop on the painting yeah and then it gets done <laughs> Yeah, they I'm actually, like, oh my they God, actually I fuck with am you. Am I gonna look or am I gonna turn? <laughs> it got me too in theaters. I think that was the, was the Conjuring two. I think that was the part that everybody thought, you know, because they're they just keep like zooming in on the painting. They're like, all right, when's it gonna happen? And then it doesn't for like a the second you think it's going to, and then it yeah. gets you. You know, it was, it was it was cool. And the the whole Amityville thing in the beginning of that was really awesome. And you know. Yeah, that was creepy. Those, those There's one though. Good. My favorite cult movie though for like horror is is uh, Subspecies. Yeah, Radu. Yeah, I one. just love yeah. all that stuff. I mean, it's so B yeah. film, but it's just he's just awesome, man. His fingers and he's probably just sucks the bloodstone and yeah, he's just a creep. It's just <laughs> it's awesome. He's like the Freddy Krueger of vampires. Yeah. That's that's my favorite. That reminds me of horror movie. When I think of that, or the Evil Dead, oh, yeah. when they redid the Evil Dead, of course. Yeah. I mean, I like the original one, but those the re usually the remakes are kind of like, yeah. The Evil Dead was good. The remake, I thought. I mean, it was different, yeah. but it was they made the it its own movie. When the girl's chopping her arm off, or and then that that yeah. girl underneath, the way she's like, no, 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 no. no. Well, they kept shooting that dude with a staple gun. That was crazy. I mean, you know, yeah, the gore factor was really good. You got a little bit of a Slayer moment because it was raining blood, and you know it was really cool. Yeah, yeah, um, that was crazy. It was some some thrash attack there, and it was it was nice. Yeah, too bad they didn't put something like just no. go go go. Or something. <laughs> yeah, just really quick. You know, I'm yeah. sure they wouldn't have cared. Is it in there? No, I'm saying they oh, should have. Okay. They could have got yeah. away with like a you know just the. There's the drum, the drum beat. People would have known what it was. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, I was very happy with that. And they, you know, they didn't put somebody else as young Ash, and they didn't do anything weird. I mean, it was just they go to the cabin, and you know, it's different people, but it's the same general thing. Which yeah, they kind of do that with sequels in the first place. It's like here's another group of idiots that are going and delving into spiritual things they're not supposed to, and there's instructions uh-huh. saying not to, and they do it anyway, and you know. That yeah. they can sequel that, so technically this, I didn't really see it as like a remake. It was just kind of another Evil Dead almost, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, did, I think they did they market it as. I think they did know. market it as a remake, but it was yeah. to me it didn't really seem like it was the first time because, of course, you can't just not put Ash. I think that's what the where the director was good at is he didn't try to like copy everything. He just. Yeah. So here's the script. I'm just gonna do it my way, though. I mean, they still had the tree limb scene, and it was actually pretty, pretty damn graphic. Not as graphic as the original, but the you know they still put that in there, and that was cool. It was more real. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They did the same thing with Last House on the Left uh, when they remade that. That was actually all right, but they yeah the the whole rape scene part that was hard to watch in the original. They made it like. Ten times longer in the remake. I was like, "Why is this the part that you focus on the most?" Like it's, <laughs> it's a lot. It's way too long for what it was. Yeah, and it was kind of uh, 
a little more morbid than the original when you know I guess it makes you want to makes her want to you know mess the killers up a little more and you know it's you know, torturers I guess if you will so there was yeah. that, you know that was a good one too uh, the new it was was pretty good you know it was, yeah that one was good I like that one that was, was there was a little campiness to it that was kind of ridiculous at times but for the most part I think they they did it the best they could do it like with you know I don't think they could have done any better. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple scenes, I guess, that were maybe too long, but just the way they set it up and just, you know, having him in the gutter. Yeah, it's great. Georgie. It, it's beautifully shot, too. Like, it's an amazing-looking film. Like, they did a really good job with just actual direction. It was Yeah, really the lighting good. on the eyes. and just, yeah. yeah, it was good. It was good stuff. And there's a lot of creep-outs in it that I didn't expect to be there. And, you know... It was, you know, overall it was good. Very claustrophobic at times, too, which is, you know... As I get older, I like more the direction of horror stuff, and I can appreciate, like, different things other than just, you know, the usual gore stuff, which, of course, I love that, too. But um, when they actually emphasize terror in another way, like, like just by angles and stuff, like The Shining, you know, they captured mm-hmm. that in a whole different way. Like, uh... Yeah, it makes you feel creepy, like... Yeah. Nothing's happening, but there's something wrong. Yeah, and when I, I saw The Shining in theaters a couple of years back with my co-host, and uh, it was the first time I had seen it, you know, I'm a younger guy, and it just, it's a whole different film in theaters. You know, the score is a lot louder, so it gets to you. So you know. the, the, the Shining was redone? No, they just, they put it back out for like an anniversary. Oh, okay, because I'm like, yeah. i never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, other than the TV version, which was... I'm not a mm. fan of it. I know people are, but um, yeah. seeing that in theaters was like it changed the whole film for me. Like I didn't wow. Yeah, I, I never saw it in a way. In saw it in a way I've never seen it before. You know, with how right. loud the music is and ominous it is, and like the angles are. You know, it's it's on the screen. It's meant to be seen on, so it just seems that much more chaotic and like you almost like you feel. How Jack Nicholson's character, you know, is feeling, you know, Jack Torrance, and it makes you feel like you're crazy for watching him turn, you know, go nuts. It's it's pretty um, remarkable how they were able to capture that. But yeah, um, yeah, that that movie scares the shit out of me too. A good bit of it. <laughs> now, the lady, you know, in the in the tub, you know, I didn't take a bath for a few weeks after. Maybe not weeks, <laughs> but I didn't want to walk into a bathroom anywhere for a little yeah, while because funny. of that. Um, you push the curtains back every yeah. time you're in a hotel. <laughs> yeah, just, I don't know, it scared the shit out of me because I started watching horror movies when I was a little bit too young, you know. Um, yeah, me too. Exorcist was the first. I didn't sleep in my bed for a good week. Yeah. Pissed, pissed my pants like Reagan did, just walked out and, you know, it was, <laughs> it was pretty yeah. good. And I was like, well, I'm not I'm turning back. I'm up there. Yeah, it's like I'm a fan now. Um. So, what are there some of your favorites? Are you a Carpenter fan and all that good stuff? Um. Yeah, I, I mean the earlier stuff for sure. Oh yeah. Um. I don't really know who did you know like the European stuff. Um, like you know Radu. I just. Mm-hmm. Um. I know him more by names of the mo- of the movies, but um, I really, I mean, I don't, would you consider, I guess he's more thriller, um, Roman Polanski, that, that, that's not gore, that's not horror movie stuff, but he, he's got some stuff that's kind of, kind of demented, like, but that's uh, more, suspense thriller, yeah, I guess that's more of a thriller kind of stuff, his, one of his first movies was the vampire sucking freaks or something, yeah, that was kind of. That's not really. I guess that's not in up your eyes alley, but. Well, you know. You know, it's a crossover, I guess. That's Rosemary's Baby. I mean, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a classic. You know. Yeah, that's Polanski. And too, again, yeah. it's more. That movie is more of like you know, like a thriller for the most part. But I mean, it's it's definitely a a metal film. I mean, the woman gets fucked by the devil and has a child. You know, it's awesome. It's a classic yeah. story, um, but that yeah, that movie's great. I, I would put that into top tier horror. You know, underneath uh, 
the old school stuff like your Universal stuff and Vincent Price and Hammer stuff you know all that of course yeah. Boris Karloff all the original black and white stuff you gotta give credit to also but Rosemary's Baby was you know I think it's still up there with you know with the Exorcist something with, and, yeah something with the Exorcist sure yeah and you know all that early yeah. stuff yeah, it gets in there but man uh I want to thank you for coming on, and it's been an honor talking to you, and I'm excited for New Dragon Lord for you, and can't wait for everyone else to, to hear it on September 21st. Yeah, me either. It's, it's going to be awesome. And uh, thanks for your time, and good luck with the site. Oh, of course. Podcasts, all that good stuff, whatever you're doing. Yeah, man. <laughs>